Hello and welcome to Tricks of the Straight Channel. Today is the 16th of February 2018 and on today's video we are featuring uh, John Stamos. Now uh, John Stamos actually happens to be um, he was an actor and actress in a very popular series called Full House. It's been the movie or the show series has been around for a very long time and uh, it included two uh, lovely twins uh, but we didn't know at that point in time that they were fraternal twins in uh, uh, Mary Kate Ashley Olsen and already we featured uh, Mary Kate on a video that Mary Kate wasn't the gender that she claimed to be so in this video if you've seen the title the title says full fuller house of what so we're gonna take a look at John Stamos just to find out if he stands up to the test of being who he claims to be now, if it's your first time on the channel and you heard all that and you want to continue watching this uh, particular video, we advise that you pause the video right here and go look for the primer video. Um, without watching the primer video, a lot of the things that I'm saying is not going to make any sense to you. You're going to have a lot of unanswered questions. So the primer video is the most important video that you have to watch in this channel so you can fully understand what's going on. And it will help you to uh, lay the foundation for you so for whatever else that we're going to be talking about is going to become crystal clear to you. So let me show you how to get to the Primer video now. Uh, for new subscribers, uh, the Primer video is going to be the oldest video on this channel. It's called, called Primer. There's also a playlist for it. So we advise that you watch this video first before you can continue watching the video that we're going to be talking about John Stamos to see if he is the gender that he claims. Now when you click on this particular video or any video that you pick up to watch on this channel, there is a link in the description section. The link in the description section is going to take you to a document. That document is going to be called Male versus Female Visual Differences. Now um, it's very, very important that um, you take up this document and you study because um, we live in a world in which there is a lot of deception going on and um, this document is going to help you to identify the genders all right if you're interested in trans investigation because um uh, we feature a lot of transgenders in our channel but the videos or our channel is not about really transgenders it's just trying to make you understand the whole picture of what's going on in your world so we advise that you study this document and uh in a normal world a world free of the fact that their food that the Vatican doesn't poison our food on water and clothing and anything that comes into contact with human beings. This document will stand the test of time in showing the male and uh, female visual differences. But because the Vatican is messing with everything that we eat, drink, uh, for example, this season, if you guys have noticed, the flu this season is very, very horrible. Um, it seems like every year the Vatican keeps mutating. Uh, the flu virus to hurt more people because the idea is to make people weak uh, right weak so that they can be controlled and the flu vaccinations we believe it's also poison that's why a lot of people are getting sick of the flu this season in a very horrible way we believe that the Vatican has a uh, you know uh, made the um, flu virus to well somebody told me we know for a fact it's not a virus it's more like some sort of fungal disease but we'll just call it what it is so everybody can understand the flu virus so the flu virus maybe has been um you know mutated and there's this this is a new strain that's at work that's why people are getting so sick so back to what i was trying to say in the sense that it was in a normal world in which the vatican isn't poisoning our food water and everything that we come in contact with that uh, the visual difference for male would stay male and the visual differences for female would stay female. But because of all the poisoning in our food, right, it's changing uh, the facial features of between, between both genders so that females now have, you know, male attributes facially and uh, males now have female attributes facially. And there's such a term as called unisex. So what this document will try to do will show you uh, the difference between male and female words if there was no such thing as unisex. So but we advise in, the, in that when you study this document that what you should pay attention to, which is the most important aspect of differentiating the sexes, is the fact that the female skeletal structure is designed to give birth. That cannot change. 
it's because no matter what the hormones do to us facially and changing the skin and the muscles to make like maybe a female look like a male or male like a female it can change the skeleton so what you should pay attention to is the skeletal structure of the sexes which determines the sex a female designed to give birth that's what differentiates a female from a male that she's able to give birth males cannot give birth males do not give birth so because of that you should pay attention to uh, the pelvic region and the back which is uh, the skeletal design that helps a woman to give birth so if you're looking on my screen right now here is a female and you can see she has an arch in her back why does a female have an arch in her back? Because the pelvis of a female is tilted forward. So the spinal cord needs to, uh, you know, um, needs to form itself in such a way to accommodate for that pelvic tilt. And that's why the female has an arch in her back. The second reason a female has an arch in her back is because the arch is extra support for the weight of carrying pregnancy. Okay. Now, when you put an arch on anything, maybe you've seen uh, buildings that have been arched or like bridges or whatever. An arch helps to distribute the weight evenly across anything. So instead of like using like, let's say, let's say a four cornered, uh, you know, support system, an arch is even better because the arch distributes the weight across, uh, distributes the weight across uh, the arch evenly such that it's evenly distributed and it won't break So that's the reason why a female has an arch in her back. It's extra support for the weight of carrying children. Okay so another reason um, The female uh, has an arch in her back uh, uh, is because the pelvis is tilted forward The pelvic tilt allows for a baby to stay inside the womb. So without the pelvic being tilted forward a baby can stay inside the womb for the nine months that the baby is supposed to stay there before she comes out. So that's one reason more for the arch in the female pelvis. Now with males, males have a straight back. A man's back does not arch in any way, shape or form because a man does not give birth. Okay? Men do not give birth. If a man's back wants to arch, it's going to arch outwards in the shape of a D or a P as you can see here like I'm hovering over with my mouse that's the shape of a D or it can be shape of a P but it's going to be a straight back straight in the sense that the, the straightness of the back goes all the way into the pelvic region right here which is like the bum area and there is no arch like you see with this female here arch before it hits the pelvis okay so with a female a female has a C shape arch in the back if you draw the line of the arch from just below the shoulder blades, it's going to form a deep C arch. If you draw a line, all right, from above the shoulder blades, let's say just uh, right around the neck, it's going to form an S-shaped spine. So a female's back will always arch. A man's back is always going to be straight, okay? The shape of a man's back is a D or a P. The shape of a female back is an S or a C. So I want you guys to remember those letters. If a man tried to arch his back, because some females do that, they take out their ribs and they try to arch the back to make it look like it's got that female arch. It's going to form weird angles in the back. And one of those weird angles is going to be an L shape. It's not going to form this deep, beautiful C arch like you find in this female. So I scroll further into the document just to show you that um, a female's back just arches more. Here's a woman right here. And as you can see, she has this deep C arch in her back because her pelvis is tilted forward. So you're always going to see this deep C arch in the back when a, a woman kneels down like this lady is kneeling down right here. Now, it doesn't matter what um, ethnicity she, she comes from. It doesn't matter the color of her skin, the texture of her hair. There's always going to be an arch in a female's back. I scroll further into document just to let you know that the size doesn't matter as well because a lot of people might think that depending on how big a woman is or how small she is, then she can be flexible enough to have that arch in her back. But that's not the case. It doesn't matter. The size doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're big, tall or small, as long as you're a woman. A woman who is determined at conception. Nothing can change the skeletal structure. Anything that you do to the body to try to make it conform to maybe a sex that it was not born with 
can only change the muscles, the skin, the water content, and the fat. It can't change the skeletal structure. So what you're looking at here is a big female to my left. She has an arch in the back and her pelvis is tilted forward. A small female to my right, she still has an arch in the back and her pelvis is tilted forward. Now, how about muscular females? Because people get the idea that if you work out, that you can look manly. But what you're looking manly with is muscle content if you're a female. And in most cases, females don't even have muscles because they don't have enough testosterone in their bodies, which helps build muscle. So the only way a female can be that muscular like a man is that she's taking steroids or some sort of testosterone uh, supplement because most of the supplements that you take uh, that you go to work out with contains an amount of testosterone in some shape or form. Now people you have to understand this because the Vatican has confused us so much into thinking that uh, when they give up all these names uh, of hormones and everything we kind of think like uh, we kind of think kind of abstract abstractly the truth is this every hormone in the body is a form of protein the protein that you ingest into your uh, into your uh, into in from your daily meals or whatever it contains some it's turned into the body turns it okay into uh, the hormones that you need the protein so when you take supplements you're taking some sort of protein that has been a uh, you know um, the best way I can put it that has been broken down in such a way that it freely forms testosterone in the body that's the best way I can put it so for a female to have muscles she's gonna take some sort of supplements because naturally she can't do that that has some sort of testosterone that helps build muscle like you see in this ladies right here but regardless that cannot change the skeletal structures like you see here with this female she still has an arch in her back nothing can change the skeletal structure changing the skeletal structure is the same thing as killing yourself you can't do it because it's like a building structure if the foundations are out the building crumbles if you mess around with a skeleton you end up dead that's it because everything that we are is based on a skeleton because the human skeleton is responsible for producing all the cells that the body needs so if your heart needs to repair itself the cells come from your bones from your bone marrow if your liver needs to repair yourself if you're sick all right the bones are the ones producing the cells that the body needs so messing around with the skeleton is tantamount to killing yourself and since nobody can change the skeletal structure we are the skeletal structure that we were conceived in till the day we die so here is another female you can see right here she's a, she has an arch in the back and uh, with all this muscular frame that she has nothing can change the skeletal structure she still has an arch in her back so let's move forward and let me show you one more other thing now if you're um, concentrating if you're if you're transvestigating people the one thing you should stick with even after reading this document is stick to the back and stick to the hips and then you'll know if the gender is male or female so let me play that clip to show you the female hip which is the most important aspect between the two both go hand in hand because um, sometimes we have uh, some sort of cognitive dissonance maybe you're looking at someone's hips and it doesn't really look right if a female has very huge hips because some of these transgenders as we may call it but they're actually mutilated personalities they put on very huge hips okay and try to look female a woman with very huge hips has to have a very significant arch in the back because that's the way it works the more wider the hips are bigger the hips there has to be a more pronounced arch in the back if the two don't go together then that means something is very wrong that person that you're looking at is not female how are you going to support the weight of huge hips without an extra support in carrying it
It doesn't make any sense. If you're going to build, let's say you're going to build a, um, a house, all right? And you have a very heavy support structure for the house. The foundation for it has to be sturdy and heavy as well. So a female has very huge hips and there's no arch in the back. A very, she should have very deep pronounced arch in the back. You're probably looking at a male. That's just what I want to let you know. So let me play that clip so we can move on and continue with looking at John Stamos. So here is the clip I'm going to play. The clip is going to show you where the female hip is at. Um, for a female to be able to give birth, her hips are below the crotch. Males do not give birth, so their hips are above the crotch. Now, I think I should show you one more picture just to explain uh, this further so you guys can really understand why the female hip is farther lower down below the crotch and the man's hip, all right, is farther above it. Let me find that. So here is the reason why um, the female pelvis and her hips are below the crotch. The first thing you need to understand is that um, this is okay. Let me just go overview this a little bit quick. The reason why the female hip is wider, all right, than the male hip is because of this space here. Now, this space allows a child to come out from this womb because the womb is enclosed inside the pelvis. So, the womb of a, la a lady is going to be inside right here. So, when a baby wants to come out, it's going to come out right here, all right, and drop out. Now, the width of the pelvis for a female is determined by the width of this pubic arch, all right? For females, the distance from here to here is always 120 degrees or more at the minimum. So at the minimum, the distance from here to here is going to be 120 degrees for a female. Some females can have it larger than 120 degrees. It could be 140, 150. That's the reason why, uh, depending on how wide this is, then the hips of a female can be further wider apart. Okay? Now, with males, this distance is set. It is 90 degrees. It's never going to be any much more larger. So that's the first uh, step in understanding why the female hip is wider. The space between what they call the ischium here or the pubic arch is wider on a female and narrow on a male. Now, concerning uh, why the male hip, all right, is farther above the crutch, what makes it farther above the crutch is the length of the pelvis, all right? As you can see right here, the length of this pelvis, okay, is longer than of this pelvis over here the female pelvis is wider because the pubic arch is wider because the pubic arch is wider it pushes everything farther apart the male pelvis on the other end is narrower so everything is just narrow okay so now what happens here is the reason for the female pelvis being below the crutch is because of this thing that's called the ischium you can see that this ischium, the distance from this hip joint down here is longer than the distance from this particular ischium hip joint here. So because of this, the, uh, the man's crotch ends lower, uh, lower down, okay? So the hips are farther up, okay? With a female, the crotch is closer to the hip joint because of this ischium prevents see if you draw a line right here see this you draw a line just right here let me see if i can draw a line so you guys can um see what i'm trying to say hold on let me see if i can draw a line okay so uh okay hold on draw let me see if i can draw so if i draw a line right here you can see that this distance is farther away so that's why a man's crutch, uh, the hip is farther away from the crutch and is above it. With a female, this distance right here, if we drew, uh, if we drew this distance also, right? Let's, let's just draw this right here like this, all the way down, okay? The female distance is right here. We draw it across. You can see now. So the female hip joint 
is closer to her crotch. The male hip joint right here is further away from the crotch. So this one is above and this one is below. So that's what I wanted to show you before I go back to playing the clip. So let's go. So since we've explained the reason why the female hip is below the crotch, I can go ahead and play this video for you to see how it's measured. So this is like uh, if this is a, a regular female, see if you're a regular female, regular meaning that some females have their waists, all right, all right, bigger than their hips, okay? So with regular females, I mean that uh, the waist is smaller than the hip. That's what I'm trying to say. So with regular females, if you stand, you would notice that from underneath your elbows, you start getting wider, and the widest point will always be the hips, which is below the crutch, okay? So this is how a female gets measured into clothes because uh, females wear clothes that are sewn from so many different countries. If there was varying degrees or varying places for the hip location, those clothes would not fit. But this is not the case because all the people, the designers in the world know the location of where the female hip is at that is below the crotch that is not above the crotch like a male. So this female here is going to be measured and as you can see the tape goes around the widest point in her body which is always irregularly the hips and it's below the crotch as you can see right there. So one thing you have to notice is that a lot of people will say there is such a thing as um, shoulder to hip ratio or that determines if you're male or female. There's no such thing. The location of the hip is below the crotch. So it doesn't matter if a female has wider shoulders than her hips, it doesn't change the location which is below the crotch, just like we showed you, okay? So the female is going to turn around um, so you can see exactly where the hip location is from the back. And as you can see right there, it's slightly above the bum line, but below the crotch. So if it was a man like we showed you with the perfect example that we showed in how longer the hip is, that location will be farther up away from the bum line. And one thing I always also like to know, uh, make you understand is that if you're trying to uh, uh, determine the gender of someone and the picture's looking at the front, all right, uh, it looks confusing. Try to see if you can find a picture from the back. Because when you look at a person from the back, you know that you're looking at either a male or a female because of how acute the Q angle is. And what is the Q angle? The Q angle is the angle between the hip, right, and the knee. And for females, it's much more acute because the hips are wider, because the pubic arch is wider, which pushes everything farther apart. Okay, so um, um, that's about about it for this one. And like I said, uh, uh, for a, the Q angle of a male always starts higher up, all right? And it's not going to be so acute as that of a female. That's the only thing you should uh, take notice of. And that's about it. So um, let's um, move on and talk about some things and then uh, carry on to John Stamos. So what I want to talk about before we get into John Stamos is the fact that the Vatican is busy and hard at work trying to shut a channel down. And why is the Vatican interested in shutting a channel down? Because like I've said before, the Vatican owns YouTube and YouTube is the Vatican. They are here only to control the information that you have. So what, the, what YouTube is all about is making people to put up videos. Because the Vatican, the Vatican wants to gauge the society engage the world to know what they know okay so they can have uh you know the best way to counteract that in the future and keep telling us lies so they offer up such platforms as youtube and make you believe that it's an independent platform that's owned by google google is also owned by the vatican all control information so a lot of people come up and make videos then the Vatican gauges the public mind to know what they know, and they find they're always trying to stay a step of a step ahead, so they can know what to say. So, like I've said before, if you've watched any of our videos on our channel, uh, you have to understand that any platform of media is not there to tell you the truth; it's there to control your mind. So, for example, um, let's say uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna say something, and I'm, I'm trying to. 
I wonder what I should say to give an example. Um, uh, what's the best example here? Um, let's say for example, some time ago, uh, a couple of years ago, when Beyonce was uh supposedly pregnant, Beyonce is a dude. Uh, we've shown we have facts and facts on Beyonce. You can go on the channel and look for so many videos on Beyonce to find out what we're saying. Uh, we've proven with unequivocally that Beyonce is a man and was never pregnant. So the story what I'm trying to tell you is that some time ago, um, Beyonce got pregnant and she went on a, a move uh, on a let's say an interview, uh, a live a teleview of a. Uh, uh, that they were just trying to talk to her uh, during her pregnancy. So since Beyonce is a man, and Beyonce um, uh, was wearing like a fake baby bump, a prosthetic, like people in Hollywood usually do, um, she um, tried to sit down and by mistake, you know, it seems like the baby bump, the fake prosthetic that she moved, uh, she, wore, she wore rather, moved awkwardly. And people could see that um, that didn't look right. OK, it, it just didn't look right like a normal baby, um, a normal uh, pregnant woman carrying uh, uh, a baby that the, the the baby bump doesn't move that way. So people quickly spotted that. Now, since the Vatican knows that people spotted that, they now try to uh, make uh, they got on the news on CNN on your social media and try to explain that what you guys were seeing was not actually uh, a prosthetic or a baby bump moving awkwardly, which shouldn't be the case. All right. So that is how the Vatican controls information. So when they give platforms like YouTube like this for you to put information out, they want to take they want to take what you know all right and try to turn it against you so it doesn't look like you saw what you saw because this is more like if you watch the movie the matrix and they say there are glitches in the system so the youtube here is here to fix the glitch that people are getting aware of what's going on in their world and then uh, they have to find a way to counter it so that's what's going on in YouTube because there is so much, you know, it is stuff that's going on that they're trying to cover up. Uh, now, one thing um, I like watching, uh, I like watching soccer. All right. You guys call it soccer. Uh, the world calls it football. But just to make you understand what I'm saying, since we're in the United States, I'm going to call it soccer. All right. Now, I like watching soccer. And um, there was a game between Real Madrid and um PSG. Uh, PSG is a club in France and Real Madrid is a club in, I think, in Spain. Yep, if I'm right, I think so. Okay, I think Real Madrid is in Spain. I'm pardon me if I'm wrong, but you guys can figure that out. Now, there's a very popular soccer player by the name of Ronaldo, okay? And um, in that game with Ronaldo, Ronaldo uh, had a penalty to take. It's something you guys can go review. Now, when Ronaldo was about to take the penalty, as he ran up to kick the ball, the ball mysteriously jumped up into the air about maybe one or two feet in the air, and Ronaldo could strike the ball. Now, why did the ball have to jump up two feet in the air? Now, the reason is this. If you're... Um, it takes a lot of force and energy to move anything from a dead stop. OK, you have to generate so much power to move anything from a dead stop. So a case in point is like maybe if you're doing deadlifts, if you're doing deadlifts, it takes a lot of power for you to move dead weight from a dead stop up. So that's why a deadlift is the most efficient exercise that you could ever do if you're trying to be fit and you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to, you know, uh, look toned. You have to do deadlifts. So the reason why the ball moved a couple of inches up from the air is so that Ronaldo doesn't have to generate so much power so that maybe all the power he's generating rather can go into the ball and some will not go into the ground trying to kick the ball. So the fans, the people who watch soccer noticed this, that this ball moved, jumped up mysteriously 
when Ronaldo was about to kick it. And now, since the Vatican, because you have to understand that all sports in the world are rigged. Let's just be factual. All sports in the world are rigged. It doesn't matter what sports you play. They are rigged. They are rigged either by the people or by some sort of mechanism used to rig it. Now, in this particular case of soccer, um, soccer is very difficult to rig because the 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 camera is always on the ball. It's not like some other sports in which you know, for, for example, if you played football, like I played football. I'm talking about the NFL here, the American football. So I'm I'm, I'm trying to make people understand the difference. I've played football. So when you play football, uh, it's more like the camera or the view is on the person with the ball. It's not on the ball, but on the person with the ball in football. Okay? So you can't see the ball and what's going on with the ball. Uh, so when you tuck the ball and you're running with it in games like rugby or let's say basketball, the camera is not on the ball. The camera is on the person with the ball. But when you're playing soccer, the camera is on the ball. The camera is not on the person with the ball. The camera is always on the ball. So that's why soccer is a little bit much more difficult to rig. So since the Vatican has its hands in everything, and they're rigging every sport for whatever reason that they deem fit and necessary, it seems they've been rigging soccer for a long time without people knowing. Because the uh, for for people to see that this ball moved when uh, Ronaldo was about to kick it a few inches up in the air, it looked weird. So that means the Vatican has devised some sort of let's say some sort of let's say valve and they've put it inside the ball or some sort of object inside the ball such that it can move the ball. All right. In such a way that if maybe someone tried to score a goal, the ball wouldn't go inside the net. All right. Or if someone wasn't looking at scoring and he kicks it, they can uh, switch that mechanism inside the soccer ball such that the ball rolls inside the net. So because the public saw this in order for them to make sure that the public doesn't understand what's going on, that that's what's going on with that ball moving up in the air and causing all the power generated by Ronaldo to kick that ball inside the net such that the goalkeeper would not be able to catch it. They went on YouTube and started to make videos. Uh, first of all, they used your favorite, some of the commentators, those guys who commentate on uh, sports events to tell us that what we saw wasn't what we saw. They said it was the turf that moved. But that sounded ridiculous. So another commentator said that he's actually seen Ronaldo do this trick before in training. Okay. Uh, the guy's name, I think, was Real Ferdinand. Uh, he used to be a teammate of Ronaldo way back in the day. And the guy who made the comment that the turf move that he was not the ball was Michael Owen. So that shows you that the whole system has been rigged by the Vatican. There's nothing really real that we watch in TV and on our lives. So that's what YouTube is for. To control the information, the glitches that come out from the system to show you that what you're looking at has been fabricated and it's not real. That the Vatican is busy fabricating and constructing our world. So the Vatican put a strike on our YouTube account on the video call is Selena Q. Selena Q happens to be a very popular singer way back in the day. She died mysteriously by her manager shooting her. And um, that's the story that we are meant to believe. But when we took a good look at Selena Q, the skeletal structure and the frame did not stand up to being female. Okay. And since Kelly Selena Q is very, very popular in the Hispanic community, which is 90% Roman Catholic. And a lot of people worship this so-called person as if he was a god. The Vatican doesn't want the uh, uh, Hispanic community to know that one of their stars, that one of their legends, is not who she claimed to be. So they put a strike on account. And they're trying so many ways to shut us down for telling you guys the truth. If you want to take a look at the Selena Q video, we have instructions on how to watch it uh, on the Bono video. So go look for the Bono video. It will show, tell you the instructions on how to watch it. It's not on YouTube. Okay? So 
the Vatican doesn't like us telling you the truth. So they can shut this channel down at any point in time. The strike that they landed on account here says that we had a violation of YouTube's policy on nudity and sexual content when there was no such thing. Because usually if you have any sort of infringement on your account, all right, the YouTube usually does is give you the minute mark for that infringement. But as you can see right here, there was no minute mark whatsoever because it did not exist. They just wanted to pull down the video and find a way to shut us down for telling you guys the truth. So, please. This channel might get shut down at any point in time because we are trying as much as possible to let the public know what's going on. So because of that, we have put some information, all the information that you need to know about your world that's going to make you understand your world in a book. We're working on trying to make sure that the book comes out by the end of February this month. Uh... If it doesn't, it's definitely going to come back, maybe it'll come out like a week or so in March. But we're working so hard so much to bring the book out in the end of this month. So we're putting all this information in the book for you. So what you need to do is send us an email and title the email book. OK, because uh, when you send us an email, We'll print a copy just because you send us an email and then we'll send you an email when the book is ready telling you the cost of the book and the cost of shipping and we'll ship the book to you anywhere you are in the world. The greatest problem the Vatican has always faced has always come from a book. The first book that did that was the Geneva Bible. We believe that the book that we are doing is going to be of much greater, greater need in this world because we believe at this point that the book is the only true history that we might have left besides the Geneva Bible. So what the book is doing is just supporting what others have done in giving us the Geneva Bible and the King James Bible. It's making you understand the history from the start to finish and in the future. And also in a book, uh, uh, maybe I've talked about this before, that um, we found out that some American presidents are not the gender they claim. We plan on making a videos about this presidents if our YouTube account is still going to be allowed to be on and is not shut down by the Vatican. But nevertheless, we have put those presidents we even did a transvestigation of the presidents inside the book so that's why maybe the book is being delayed a little bit because i'm telling you guys is not one or two presidents there are more than two presidents who are not the gender they claimed it's so sickening such to the point that a president and a vice president are not male they are actually females in the United States presidency. That's how crazy it's been. But we put all this information inside the book and we'll also make a video in the future. We don't know yet. So please send us an email. So let us know that you're interested in the book and we'll make a copy when we're publishing it out from the printer and include you. And then we'll send you an email on the cost of the book and the price of shipping. We'll ship the book to you anywhere. And also, we also need you to send us an email so we can have you on our contact list in case this channel goes down, all right? So that we can send you an email when the website that's under construction that we're working on is live. We can send you an email and say that we are over on this website. So you could go down and watch videos. So send us an email with the title book or just send us an email so we have you on our contact list for future notifications on uh, our website that's on us under construction. And also we have so many things coming down the pipeline like movies, good Hollywood production movie. I know. Let me not say Hollywood. What I'm trying to say is that good movies that look like they were made in Hollywood that will make you understand your world even better and tell you the truth of what's going on. So please send us an email 
and also subscribe to the second channel tricks of the s trade 2 in case this one goes down we have no way to reach you temporarily until our website comes up so please do that also just send us an email with a title book and that's just what i wanted to inform you for this section before we can uh scoot over now and let's get into john stamos so here is the part that I have to put out on a warning before I continue with John Stamos. Uh, the warning is that our channel is different. Um, you can't come up to the channel and just label someone a transgender without facts. People kind of misunderstand that free speech doesn't mean that you get to say what you say whenever you want to say it. Free speech actually means say what you want to say, but have the facts to back it up. So if you're going to accuse someone of being a thief, you have to provide facts that this person is stealing. Otherwise, that's considered slander. All right. So we wouldn't like anybody to go around calling us thieves if we are not a thief and they have no proof to show what we stole. We should consider that when we're leaving comments. You just can't say someone is a transgender, that everybody's a transgender. That is slanderous. Imagine for a second that somebody would be calling you something you are not without proof every day of your life. How would you feel? We need to be responsible for the words we say. So when you come up to this channel and you say someone is a transgender and you provide frivolous facts, frivolous facts like somebody else's video that, that you did not make or frivolous facts you said that someone said so because it's not a fact. Or frivolous facts of saying something like the person has long index fingers or ring fingers, he looks mannish, has woman ways, has a long torso, has long arms, has an Adonis belt, has, uh, uh, you know, um, has a strong jawline, has brow bossing, has a slanting forehead, and all of that nonsense that have nothing to do with childbirth. Because the only difference between a male and a female is that the female can give birth and the male cannot. And that difference lies in the pelvic region and the back. The ability for a female to give birth lies in the pelvic region which concerns the hips and the back. So if you come to our channel and you do not provide links of pictures showing that the person in question that you're calling a transgender does not have hips below the crutch and arch in the back a pelvis tilted forward and a wide pubic arch, you are going to get blocked. You have to supply facts. Those are the only facts that we consider. If you bring up anything like a search of Google search results as your links of pictures, you're still going to get blocked. If you ask a question, is this person a transgender? You are still going to get blocked. If you want to ask a question, send us an email. Take out the time to send an email and say, we want to know if this person is a transgender or not. Don't do it in the comment section, because if you do that, they're going to get, get you blocked. That's just fact. You can be on a sly and say, oh, uh, I heard this person was a transgender. You're still going to get blocked. Any, you don't bring up the person's name in the comment section if you do not have proof. That's just how it works. If you're going to say anything that has to include the person's name, you must supply links of pictures of the female skeletal structure proving that the person is a transgender or not, or you're going to get blocked. Our channel is different. We're not here for uh, entertainment. We're not here to... Uh, uh, we're not here to uh, get so many subscribers. We are here and only dedicated to the truth. That's all we care about because there have been so much deception and people are getting killed because of this deception every day. So all what we're concerned about is the truth and getting the truth into as many hands, as many minds as we can. If you're delusional and you can't think with your brain, you can't distinguish between fantasy and reality, don't come up to this channel. We don't need you. We need people who are dedicated to the truth, who have a brain and can think about things logically, can be able to separate the chaff from the wheat. OK, so with that said, the Vatican hasn't changed. They're the ones responsible for your world. They're the ones responsible for all the transgenders that you see on TV. And there is a reason for it. It's not just because they love doing it. There is a reason behind it. 
it's a form of worship, number one. And secondly, it's a way to control, to specially breed people that they can use to control your reality. We've put all this information in the book. So if you're interested in the book, like we said, send us an email with the title book. And regardless, still send us an email. So we have you on our contact list for our uh, website that's under construction and for future things that we're working on that's going to be coming down the pipeline sooner or later. All right. So send us an email. So let's move over to uh, the uh, transvestigation of... Um, John Stamos. But first of all, we want to take a look at uh, because the title of the uh, the video that you're watching is, is saying Full Fuller House of What. So let's take a look at Full House, which John Stamos came to be very, very popular under. Now, he says here Full House Wikipedia page. You can pause the video at any point in time. I just go Google Full, Full House. It says Full House is an American television sitcom created by Jeff Franklin for ABC. The show chronicles events of widow father Danny Turner, who enlists his brother in law Jesse Catalyst and best friend Joey Gladstone to help raise his three daughters. Why three daughters? Because it's a Vatican code of numbers. So if you've heard me say, if you've heard me say the Vatican code of numbers and you're interested in it, uh, please go look for the playlist called Vatican code of numbers or specifically watch the Lisa Lopes video. Uh, Lisa Lopez, I don't know if it's Lisa Lopez or Lisa Lopes. I think it's spelled Lisa Lopes. Uh, it could be pronounced Lisa Lopez, but look for the Lisa Lopes video and you will see the Vatican Code of Numbers. I go into detail about that in there. So uh, it says here, uh, the um, it says here in Full House, it said it aired from September 22, 1987. Why September 22? Nine. 22 is the double of September 11. Now remember, guys, September 11 happened on the ninth month, which is a Vatican Code of Numbers because three multiplied by multiplied by three is nine happened on a Tuesday. A Tuesday is the third day in the week. A Vatican Code of Numbers. So the Vatican Code of Numbers always comes in multiples of three. So that's just what I wanted you guys to note about the Fool House, uh, that this was all a Vatican Code of Deception because all, uh, some people, not all of them, were not the gender they claimed on those shows. Now, moving over to John Stamos. Uh, John Stamos here, uh, you can pause the video at any point in time and copy out the link or just go Google John Stamos Wikipedia page will come, will bring this up and you can um, look at what you want to watch or just read through it because um, his web page is littered with the Vatican Code of Numbers, the symbology of the Vatican Code of Numbers. It says here in his youth, Stamos worked for his father's restaurants as a teenager and a job flipping burgers in the Orange County area. He ended, he attended John F. Kennedy School and played in the marching band there at 15. Why 15? Because 1 plus 5 is 6, and 6 is a multiple of 3, a Vatican code of numbers right there. All right? Um, that's just what I wanted you to notice. Then another thing that he says, his parents were supported for his aspiration to be an actor, and although he planned to enroll at Cyprus College for 1981, he skipped his first semester to focus on launching a career as an actor with his father's blessing after just three weeks. After just three weeks, he landed his role in General Hospital. Why did they have to put after just three weeks? Why couldn't you just say that he landed a role in General Hospital after a while, why three weeks? It's a Vatican code of numbers because they want other people to know that this is one of theirs. So the Vatican is responsible for your world. And like uh, we've talked about it, that the reason for um, a lot of these things that we see, a reason for pedophilia in our world is because nobody presently has can live up to like, say, a hundred years or maybe say three generations. So the Vatican is interested in taking young children and breeding the next set of generals or people to continue the plan that they've put set in motion to merge a world into a new world order. And the new world order is more than the name means new world order. We put all this information in the book. You'd be amazed at what the new world order actually means. We can't talk about it in the videos because there are certain things we can't talk about. You need to read it for yourself to see. So if you're interested in the book, please send us an email with the title book and just send us an email regardless. So we have you in our contact email list for our website under construction and for future videos that we're working on down the line. So please remember that. So um, that is what the Vatican does. There is the interested in pedoph pedophilia is the foundation of the new world order with us because without pedophilia, the Vatican cannot succeed. 
without transgendering these kids who become products so that they can use to control our reality. They can't work and they have to take these children from a very early age. That's why the Vatican is so much interested in, they have the highest number of orphanages in the world. It's not there just because they want to take care of young children, it's because they can harness these children. They can have free children to do whatsoever they want to do with. That's how sickening the Vatican is. All right? So they're in, the, they're in everything. They're in the orphanage, they're in the hospital, so they can do whatsoever they want to do and keep on continuing and perpetrating these evil acts and merging people into the new world order. The Vatican is, uh, there is no way, there are no words I can describe because it's uh, what they are doing is more than human. And we try to explain all that in, in a book to make you understand that what you're doing is not of this world. It's more than what humans can naturally do. That means there's something else behind it. And um, uh, the Vatican won't stop. That's just the truth. They're never going to change. They're never going to stop. Because they are an autopilot by something else. And they are responsible for doing so many... The, the, the way the Vatican works is this. Um, they want to make the world so full of evil so they can cover up their own evil acts. So they'll perpetuate... They'll organize the evil and cover it up. Well, um, like I've said, we put all this information in the book. And um, if you're interested in the book, send us an email with the title book. Our email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com, please. Or you can go to the about section of the channel and look for the email. But our email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com. Uh, it's very, very easy. And just send us an email with the title of the book so we can put you on the email list. So let's get into the uh, investigation of John Stamos so we can wrap up this long video. Sorry for it being a long video today. So here is the first picture of John Stamos. As you can see right here, John Stamos has an acute Q angle that's below the crutch. Now we covered up the pretty parts because we don't want YouTube, which is the Vatican tell us we have nudity, so that you guys are the so-called fake YouTube community, which is all the, uh, it's only the Vatican that owns it. It's just an excuse that they use to shut people down for whatsoever reason on their, their community when they have so much so much nudity on YouTube videos like for example in the Rihanna video I think I've, I've forgotten what the name of the song was I think I've showed it before and in some Iggy Azalea in which they're fully exposing their chest YouTube didn't shut down those videos all right of nude women dancing in that video of Rihanna I don't remember the title of the song but on our channel for no reason we don't show anything at all and they still want to shut us down because we're telling you the truth. Okay, so all I want you to notice right here is that John Stamos has an acute Q angle that's below the crutch. That acute, that angle right there is not the Q angle of a man. It's not the Q angle of a male. It's because it's 100% female, been masquerading around on full and fuller house, doing things that we have no clue because John Stamos is a woman, is not a man. And also, um, I need to thank somebody especially for this video, uh, for bringing this to attention. So let me pull up that subscriber's name real quick. The subscriber I want to thank for bringing us, uh, for bringing this to attention's name is Amy Wilkie. Amy Wilkie, we really appreciate what you're doing. So keep on doing what you're doing and keep on learning. Um, because um, you've made us to um, um, understand um, what's going on and, and, and trying to bring to attention the people that we never ever imagined uh, could be uh, the agenda that's not the agenda that we are presenting to us. So thank you so much and keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we really do appreciate you. So let's let's move let's move on. So here is another uh, picture of John Stamos. As you can see right here, John Stamos has an arch in his back and the pelvis is tilted forward just by looking at that. That is the pelvic tilt of a female as you can see right here because John Stamos is 100% female, was never a man in the first place. He's just masquerading around as one on full house and fuller house of what? So look at that, arch in the back, tilted pelvis forward. 
100% female. Some more pictures of John Stamos. And this is John Stamos. As you can see, like I told you before, if you're a female, all you need to do is that you will start noticing that you spread from underneath your elbows. This so-called man, he has an arch in his back from below his elbows from where he's spreading out. And he says that he is male when he's not. John Stamos is female, 100% arch in the back all right let's go further uh, another picture of john stamos right here in the q angle right this you can see says it's below the crotch it's not above it below the crotch because john stamos is 100 percent female if he has children i wonder where he's getting those children from but we already know that so you can look up at the theory of surrogates on our channel it's actually in the primal list if you're a new subscriber we have the theory of surrogates part one and part two in there as well on that playlist to explain how these people make create children and make children look so much like them a lot of people get confused a lot of delusional people get confused people um if you have to come out of delusions and understand to understand things the number one thing that you have to do is to stop using fluoride toothpaste mouthwash and floss that messes up your brain cells it's gonna take a while for the fluoride to completely drain out of your body it might take up to depending on how you work it how how you work your body it could take two months three months or four months but you need to stop using fluoride it's the most dangerous drug ever administered to man okay so uh, let's get back to john stamos right here and you can see that the q angle is below the crutch uh, let's go further again. And here is John Stamos again, like we said, for you to take a very good look at the back. There is an arch in that back and the pelvis is tilted forward. That is the bum of a female. As you can see right here, let me see if I can blow this up as much as I can. See that? That's the bum of a female and an arch in the back because John Stamos is 100% woman. And this lady that's walking around with her is just helping to masquerade that fact even more that this is a heterosexual male when there's actually two homosexuals right here. All right, let's move further. John Stamos again. As you can see, where is the navel? Can somebody locate the navel of John Stamos if this is a man? We can't find it. Why? Because the navel is right up there. It's way too high in the body of the torso for a man. If this was a man, just from where his waist is at, because that, that's where a man's waist is supposed to be, you should see a navel right around there. For a female, it's farther up. John Stamos, 100% female, was never a man in the first place. And look at the Q angle. It's below the crutch. That's the Q angle right there. It's below the crutch because he's 100% female, was never a man. He's been lying to a lot of people who've been hooked up on generations watching Full House. Okay, so let's go another picture of John Stamos. And here is John Stamos again. And look at that navel right there. Why, why is it there? That's not a man's navel. And look at the chest muscles. Now, females suffer from what I call the curse of the pec pectoral muscles. Why do we call it the cars of the pectoral muscles? Because a female's chest is not designed to have a lot of muscles because it's designed to carry mammary glands for breastfeeding. Okay, so with John Stamos right here, he can't have those um, pecs that men have because he is female. And as you can see right here, there is no clear separation between this uh, chest muscles and the abdominal muscles because that's the way it works on females. And look at this navel. And look at the West Indian point. And look at how he's spreading wider from underneath his elbows. Elbows underneath, he's spreading wider because he's 100% female. And look, he has a nail vanish right all female traits it's trying to tell us in symbology and sign that he's a woman but a lot of people don't catch it because they are delusional hooked up on fluoride toothpaste all right let's go further john stamos again the same thing i wanted to show you no clear separation between the chest and abdominal muscles there is an arch in the back because he's 100 percent woman it's never a man in the first place. And look at that, the Q angle. Where is it? See how high the curve length starts? Because for a female, female have a very long curve length because the waist starts higher up. So 
you draw a line from here see how long that is goes all the way down here because that's where the Q angle is and look at how acute that is because it's below the crotch is the Q angle of a female and that's what John Stamos has he's been masquerading around as a male for way too long let's move on John Stamos again and look at that Q angle that is the Q angle of a female walking it's not the Q angle of a man and as we know the tricks of the trade all right one of the tricks of the trade in deceiving people all right about trying to make us believe that this is an actual female is that they put their hands in their pockets why is the hand in their pocket i mean you have a backpack on your back because he's wearing, he's wearing a backpack right here okay with a man you put a backpack on your back and you put your hands in your pocket that's a very awkward way of walking you have weight on your back and your arms are not free why because they've been trained this way from childhood that's why the vatican is so interested in pedophilia because mind control starts from childhood people believe in such thing as monarch programming monarch programming is just it just means teaching someone okay from what they hear what they see okay and who they interact with how to do things a certain way that is what mind control is all about you're trained by what you see you're trained by what you hear you're trained by who you interact with and you're trained by what you read so if you take up a child from childhood and train the child in a very specific manner without having no other interactions of people with a different mind from other than the training that you're giving it that child is going to be a hundred percent monarch program there's no such thing as you know uh controlling somebody with a snap of a fingers and the person just does something immediately for you it's not these triggers have to be in place from childhood for it to work otherwise it wouldn't work you can only snap your fingers at someone and they do what they want or what you want them to do if they're on drugs that's it and it has to be some sort of hypnotic drop but monarch programming is from childhood that's why the vatican is in the educational system of the world they they're training you from childhood so that you will not deviate from what they've told you that's why a lot of people are delusional that's why even the kids that are in school today are even more delusional we make you all understand all this perfectly in our book so as you can see right here the Q angle is below the crotch. He puts his arms in his pockets to cover up the wide hips that he has because he knows for a fact that he is female. But because he's been trained from childhood, they'll just tell him that this is the way he has to walk. And that's what he knows. Because all John Stamos will know will be whatsoever he's been taught, all right? And the people that are around him and that's it he doesn't know anything else besides that so even if you were to tell him that you're female except maybe for some reason over the years as he was being trained he's had interaction with somebody maybe a specific person who tells him that this is not the way things ought to be then he can break free and come out and say look i am not the gender that i claim but besides that he's always going to stay inside the training that he's been trained since from a child he was all right so let's move on to uh, another picture of john stamos and can you see that that's a female mannerism right there people you have to understand the, the way females act and the way males act is in their genes it's genetic Females don't just act the way they are just because they are acting. It's the genetics that's making them act that way. A man doesn't just act the way he acts because he likes acting that way. It's in the genetics. So the genetics will always make you act the way you are. Will always call upon the gender that you are. So for some some examples, maybe you you look at maybe a uh, Serena Williams who's actually a male, right? And all of a sudden you see the male action coming out because that is the genetic material speaking that you're male in here this is the genetic material of john stamos speaking 
and as you can see the Q angle is below the crotch even though it's very very it's very subtle right here but it's still below the crotch you can see the widest point is right there look at how he spreads this is elbows he starts spreading see that spreading wider 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 and then he tapers off right around here because he's 100 percent female and even from the mannerisms of him putting his thumb up on the way the body is the body motion right here you can see that's a woman all right let's go john stamos i just wanted to show you this that john stamos has a very wide pubic arch that's not the pubic arch of no male see how wide this is from here to here that's the pubic arch of a female if it was a male it would be more v-shaped i just want you to understand that with a man sitting down this is going to form a more v-shape with a female sitting down is going to form more of a u-shape because this is you right here because john stamos is 100 percent female See that teen stars, he was trained right from childhood, or rather she was trained right from childhood. Here is in John Stamos again, as you can see the both of them, there's the two females walking and you can see they're walking the same way. See the cute, acute Q angle, acute Q angle here again, two females walking and one's trying to act and tell you that this is a man when there are two of them walking as female. There's two lesbians. I mean, this is how the Vatican passes on homosexuality to you and you do not know it. Homosexuality should be something that somebody chooses. It shouldn't be forced upon the public. If you're a homosexual, that's your choice. We're not here to judge you. God, God is the one who judges you. We are only here exposing the people who are lying to us and telling us that they are not what they say. That's all we're here for. So John Stamos here is a lesbian, a very uh, awkward and weird looking one with an acute Q angle below the crotch and walking the same way like the woman on his right because there are two females. All right, uh, let's go another picture. John Stamos right here. You can see how, uh, John Stamos right here is trying to keep his hands right here on his waist, but he doesn't have that position like a man does. So that's why this looks awkward with, with the way he's trying to put his hands on his waist because the waist doesn't exist right there. It exists, it, it does, his waist exists up here. So this looks weird because a man wouldn't keep his hands this way. And look at the cute Q angle and the pencil uh, thighs because that's how a female looks. The cute Q angle, the Q angle right here is below the crotch. This is where the Q angle starts. And the cute Q angle, let me see if I can blow this up so you guys can see clearly look at that the q angle is right here acute below the crotch because john stamos is 100 percent female been masquerading around as a male for way too long and deceiving deceiving generations okay uh look at john stamos again here arch in the back even the clothes you'll say i am a female all day arch in the back and running like one okay 100 percent female never a man john stamos again Look at that Q angle, cute Q angle below the crotch, below the crotch, cute Q angle all day. And he's on Fox. See that? They even put the Vatican Code of Numbers on the show, September 29, Fox, Tuesdays. Tuesdays is the third day of the month. Remember, I already explained that. September is the ninth day of the month. It's a, a multiple of three, three times three. And on 29, again, they show you the date. Fox. Fox knows because Fox is owned by the Vatican that John Stamos is 100% female. They're just messing around with you all this while and you don't know. And he was in this show called John Stamos' grandfather. He's not suited for this. He's not suited for this? <laughs> Do you know what that means? They're actually telling you that you're looking at a woman. They say he's not suited for We see him wearing a suit. So why would you say he's not wearing a suit? He's not suited for this. Okay, let's go. John Stamos again, arch in the back. And look at that. There is no clear definition between the chest muscles and the abdominal muscles. They're all merged into one because you're looking at a female. Arch in the back, walking like a female. Q angle is below the crutch as well. Because John Stamos is 100% woman. Been masquerading around as a male for way too long. John Stamos again here. This is an acute Q angle. Let me see if I can blow this up. It was a small picture. But regardless, you can see the fine hourglass figure that he has that would make any woman envious. Look at that. 
See, he starts spreading from underneath his elbows. Look at how wide he spreads. We then find our glass figure. And then he tapers right around here where his hips at and the Q angle. See how acute that is? Because John Stamos is 100% female. Sorry for the blurry picture. Uh, the picture wasn't a very good quality, but we just had to pull that out to show you guys. Uh, let's go. Another one. Look at John Stamos. Can you look at this and say you're looking at a man? Look at look at the hourglass figure. Just look at the hourglass figure. Look at that. And this is supposed to be a man who's been training your kids in full house. Nope. This is 100% a woman all day. Look at the hourglass figure and look at the look on his face. Woman screaming all day, I am a woman. All right, let's go. John Stamos again, arch in the back above the navel the indent point for a female the waist point for a female above the navel no clear separation between the chest muscle and the breast muscles or oh, sorry the chest muscle and the abdominal muscles because it's 100 percent female if i made a mistake over saying that you guys should know the videos come out raw we don't have no editing about it so if it comes out wrong it comes out wrong it is what it is but you know what I'm saying. There's no clear separation between the chest and abdominal muscles right here because John Stamos is 100% female. All right. Another picture of John Stamos at Comic-Con. And look at that. That Q angle is screaming all day. I am a female. It's below the crotch. Below the crotch. Not above it. Below, below the crotch because he is female. All right. Another picture again. Look at the hourglass figure that we showed you. This is a much clearer picture as you can see right here. He starts spreading from underneath his elbows. He gets wider, 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 wider. And it tapers around you from where you have the Q angle because John Stamos is 100% female. Was never a man. Okay. John Stamos again. And I don't know who this lady is, but she probably was one of those ladies maybe in one of the movies that they acted. This lady is trying to find John Stamos' waist. Because when you're uh, walking with someone naturally, if you're male and female walking together, you always try to find uh, the waist point of the person that you're with. And she finds the waist point of John Stamos, which is right here. And that's above the navel. It's not below like it should be for, be, uh, be for a man because John Stamos' waist is right here. And look at how he spreads. Let me blow this up. Uh, let me see if I can blow that up. Oh, what's wrong with my mouse now? Okay, let me blow this up. And look at this. He starts spreading from right underneath the elbow. See the elbow right here? He starts spreading because that's his waist point. And look at the hourglass figure as he curves and curves and curves and curves. And it starts terminating right around here from where the hips are at because John Stamos is 100% female, was never a man in the first place. And this woman right here or this girl is trying to sell us the idea that he's talking or she's talking to a male. All right. Uh, some more pictures of John Stamos. We already show you that hourglass figure. That's the hourglass figure of a female. Uh, let's see. I think that's the end of the pictures that we have today. Um, sorry for this being a long video. We didn't intend it to be that way, but like as, uh, we've showed you, John Stamos is 100% female, and um, he's been lying to us from the shows of Fool and Fuller House for way too long. So um, the Vatican is hard at work trying to shut us down. We're trying to get the book out to you before the end of this month. Uh, we added some few more things, but hopefully we think it should be out this month. Uh, if not, it's going to be maybe like a week or two into March. But we guarantee you that before the second week of March, this book will be out. So send us an email with the title book if you're interested in the book. And send us an email regardless because we want to have you on our email contact list in case the Vatican shuts us down, who's trying so hard to do so, uh, that we can send you information on when our website is ready. That's under construction. And some further things down the line like movies that we're making to give you a clear understanding of your world. And also, um, as usual, we leave you with these words. Remember, uh, our email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com. If someone is trying to figure that out, our email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com. And also, please subscribe to the second channel, Tricks of the S-Tray 2, in case the Vatican shuts us down so we can have somewhere 
to reach out to you at least temporarily until our website is all put together so we leave you with these words please look with your eyes but see with your brain thanks and bye-bye